नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग टेक्निक्स कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल इंप्लीमेंट लीनियर एस वी एम फ्रॉम स्क्रैच टू बिगिन विथ वी इम्पोर्ट नम पाय मैट प्लॉट लिप एंड सी बॉन वी ऑल्सो इम्पोर्ट मेक क्लासिफिकेशन एंड मेक ब्लॉक्स फ्रॉम एस के लर्न डॉट डेटा सेट्स मॉड्यूल सो फार इन आर कोर्स वी ट्रेन अ बंच ऑफ क्लासीफायर्स फॉर लर्निंग अ सेपरेटिंग हाइपर प्लेन बिटवीन क्लासेस एस वी एम ऑल्सो फाइंड अ सेपरेटिंग हाइपर प्लेन बिटवीन द क्लासेस बट विद द कंस्ट्रेंट दैट द मार्जिन बिटवीन टू क्लासेस इज मैक्सिमाइज द हार्ड एस वी एम अज्यूम्स दैट द क्लासेस आर लीनियरली सेपरेबल एंड नन ऑफ द डेटा पॉइंट्स इज विद इन द मार्जिन और इज मिस क्लासीफाइड सो वी हैव डिपिक्टेड दिस पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन इन दिस फिगर सो वी हैव टू क्लासेस वन विद द पॉइंट्स कलर्ड इन ब्लू एंड द अदर वन विद द पॉइंट्स कलर इन ग्रीन there are two features x1 and x2 so in this particular case the hyperplane that svm learns is shown here with the red line and this hyperplane is learned in such a way that the distance between two classes is maximized and this distance is called as margin so we have what is called as support vectors which are points from either classes and those points lie on two hyperplanes which are called as bounding planes so hyperplane is found out such that the margin is maximized so this is an additional constraint that svm adds on top of finding the separating hyperplane so for a new data point represented by a feature vector x we find the label for this data point by performing the dot product between the weight vector and the feature vector and adding the bias unit to it and the resulting value is passed to np dot sign and the label is assigned based on the sign of the the result that we obtained from this particular operation so we have two classes one is a positive class and second is negative class that will come out with np dot sign we use hinge loss as a loss function so hinge loss is depicted in this particular figure so x axis is basically yi into w transpose xi plus b and whenever this t is greater than or equal to 1 we assign a loss of 0 and whenever the value of t is less than 1 the loss is proportional to yi w transpose xi plus b so this particular function is non differentiable at t equal to 1 so the loss function for svm with hinge loss is written as half of the square of the norm of the weight vector plus c times sum over all training example the hinge loss at individual training example which is given by max of 0 comma 1 minus yi w transpose xi plus b the second term is hinge loss that penalizes the misclassification it basically measures the error due to misclassification so hinge assigns error 0 if the data point is correctly classified and it is not too close to the decision boundary we we need to minimize the hinge loss function to find the max margin classifier for optimization we will be using gradient descent procedure let us implement soft svm classifier so we have a class which is soft svm it takes an argument c so we set self dot c which is a class member variable to c and then there are other class member variables like w b x and y so w is a weight vector b is the bias x is the feature matrix and y is the label vector of the training examples number of data points is stored in the member variable n and that is initialized to 0 and number of dimensions are stored in the member variable d and that is also set to 0 so we implement a bunch of functions in the class the first one is the decision function it takes a feature matrix as an input and it returns the dot product between the between the feature matrix and the weight vector and add a bias to this so this basically gives us the decision function in svm then we calculate the cost which is half of 
square of the weight vector plus c times the summation over all training example the max between 0 and 1 minus margin and the margin function basically implements y into the value that we obtain from the decision function. Then we define the fit function which basically optimizes the parameter. It takes feature matrix, label vector, learning rate and number of epochs as input. By default we have set learning rate to 10 raised to minus 3 and epoch to 500. We initialize w and b. We also use a loss array to, to store the losses that we get step after step. We first find the margin, then we find the cost that is the loss due to the parameters that we have uh, that we have set up. Then we append the loss to the loss array. Then we perform the calculation of the partial derivative and update w based on the last value of the w minus learning rate times the partial derivative with respect to w. We perform the same thing for b. We first calculate the partial derivative of b and update the parameter of b to the existing parameter minus learning rate times the partial derivative with respect to b. Then we implement the predict function and predict function what it does is it takes feature matrix as an argument it calculates the decision function and pass the decision function through np.sign. So this returns the sign of the value obtained from the decision function. Then we also calculate score by, by calling the predict function and, and returning the mean that y is equal to p. Then there is a code for plotting the decision boundary. Let's demonstrate the working of soft SVM with the training data uh, where classes are linearly separable. So here we generate training data with two classes. So we have data points from red class and yellow class and you can see that the classes are very well separated. So let's apply soft SVM on this and see what kind of hyperplane is learned by our implementation. So we simply instantiate an object of soft SVM by setting c equal to 1 and we call the fit function on the soft SVM object by passing the training feature matrix and the label vector. And then we print the weight vector that we obtain from the, the fit function. And then we have code written for visualizing the decision boundary and the bounding hyperplane. So you can see that the decision boundary learned by the classifier is with the solid golden line and the bounding hyperplanes are shown with the dotted lines. And the support vector that we learn has the value of w as 0 0.29 and 0.28. So this is, the, this is the weight for the first feature and this is the weight for the second feature. Let's perform a prediction for new example to show how the predict method works. Here we represent a new example with np.array and we have two features. The first feature is set to minus 2.2 and the second feature is set to 2.2. Then we have a code for plotting both the classes and new example. So this is a new example which is shown with which is painted with color blue. Next we call the predict function with the new example as an argument and you can see that the SVM has predicted class minus 1 for the new example which is the red class and you can see that which is uh, the class is predicted correctly. Now what we will do is we will generate the second data set where we have linearly separable classes but with noise. So you can see that classes are by large linearly separable but there are some points which are noisy. So we will be using the soft SVM for, for this kind of use case. So this is our training set and we, we instantiate an object of soft SVM with value of c equal to 10 and then we call the fit method 
with the feature matrix and the label vector from the training set. And we also plot the decision boundary. So you can see that the decision boundary that we have learned include some points within the margin. Let's change the value of C to 1 and try to see what kind of decision boundary that we learn. So here we have learned a decision boundary with the, the value of W1 as 0.36, value of W2 is minus 1.04 and the value of B is 2.2. So next what we do is we change C to 100. Now naturally if we change C to 100 what will happen is SVM will become stricter and it will allow lesser amount of misclassification while learning the boundary and which is indeed the case that you can see here it is allowing far lesser misclassification or points within the boundary and the value of W1 is changed to 0.82 and W2 to minus 6.7 and B is 20. So let's come back to the original formulation and also examine the weight vector and bias for c equal to 10. So for c equal to 10, we have the value of w1 is 0 0.30, value of w2 is minus 1.62 and the value of b is 3.71. So there is not much difference when we try with c equal to 1 or 10, the decision boundaries are more or less. Um, more or less equivalent but when we change to c equal to 100 we get radically different decision boundary which has got a very narrow margin between the two classes. Next what we do is we uh, create third data set which is non-separable data set and you can see that this data set indeed is linearly non-separable and we require some kind of a non-linear decision boundary to separate these two classes. So let's anyway apply soft SVM on this with c equal to 10 and you can see that soft SVM is not able to learn the nonlinear decision boundary over here as you can see. So we can also explain by changing the value of c to let's say 100 and trying to see what kind of separation we get so this is this decision boundary also does not work so no matter what you do soft svm is not able to learn this non linear decision boundary and we require some other method to to tackle this problem and that's where kernel methods come into picture in the next video we'll implement kernel method for addressing this particular problem. In this video, we implemented soft SVM using hinge loss from scratch and demonstrated its utility in linearly separable cases. We also shown that even with largely linear separable classes with some noise, soft SVM is able to learn a decent decision boundary. However, the soft SVM is not able to learn the nonlinear decision boundary when we have two classes that are that are not linearly separable. So in the next video, we'll implement kernel SVM for such kind of cases.